Hello, and thank you for joining us for online worship with Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Moorhead, Minnesota. Whether you're joining us for the first time or the 500th, we are so glad that you're with us today. I'm Pastor Maggie Beertness, and along with the whole team here at Good Shepherd, we are glad to be worshiping with you today. Uh, we want to invite you to stay in touch with us throughout the week. We regularly post words of encouragement on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, so we invite you to follow us so that you can be encouraged in faith wherever life takes you. We also invite you to join us in being the church, wherever it is that you are. And so we invite you to like and share our posts so as to invite others and encourage them in faith. We also invite you to check in at Good Shepherd with your so on your social media pages. For every check-in that we receive, we send a donation to one of our local mission partners. Our partner for the month of March is Lutheran World Relief. So with all of that being said, let's begin. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We waited for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire. Church, I want to create space for us to connect with you today wherever you're at. And know that not only are you lifting up a confession to God right now, but we are too. It may feel like life is too much to burden, but we're in this burden with you. And so let's now, together as the church, from wherever we're at, silently lift up whatever it is that's on our hearts to God.
God hears you, God meets you in this space, and in Christ Jesus, God forgives you all your sins. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. God, as we make our way through this Palm Sunday worship service, I pray that we might have our eyes open to the movement of you in our lives. And God, as we're transformed by this gift that you've brought us, may we find ways to share it with others. Be with us now during this time of worship. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. I am so glad that you're here. We're beginning this very important week in the life of the church. And do you know what that week is called? It's Holy Week, and it starts today with Palm Sunday. This was be the beginning of a very important week, the week that we remember Jesus' death on the cross. But that isn't the end of the story, and we need Easter, which is next week, but we're not there yet. We're at the beginning of this special Holy Week. On Palm Sunday, people gathered to meet Jesus, and they grabbed branches from palm trees to wave and say, Hosanna. Where Jesus lived, the palm tree was everywhere. The branches of the palm were a, a symbol of victory and joy. And people would wave palm branches as they cheered in celebration when an important person would ride through the streets of town. As Jesus rode into Jerusalem, people waved palm branches and they shouted and cheered, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The people were cheering for Jesus as their king. And maybe you know this story or maybe you've heard it for the first time today. Either way, here is what I hope that we can all learn. We weren't there on that Palm Sunday and we don't have palm trees. Our trees are still covered in snow. So what is our part in this story? I want you to know that we are a part of the story. We have an important part in God's story. God loves us so much that God sent Jesus to earth. God sent Jesus to teach and to heal and then to die for our sins. And God loves us so much that God sent Jesus to be an example for us. Jesus lived to love and to serve others, and we can do the same. So as we enter this Holy Week, let's find ways to be like Jesus. How can you help someone? How can you pray for someone? Who do you know that could use a phone call with a reminder that God loves them so much? And who can you invite to Easter worship? We all need to hear about God's love, and Easter is the best reminder of that. So come back throughout Holy Week and invite someone to come with you. God loves you so much, friends. Hosanna. Amen. The preaching text today comes from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Now Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it's written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Now his disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of that tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh, grace unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today we read a portion of scripture reserved for a day just like today to kick off a week we call Holy Week, a week that brought humiliating betrayal, a week that brought an unjust death, and a week that brought undeserved grace through a cross. Now today you might be wondering what Palm Sunday is all about what a palm branch has to do with the Savior. Now in the Old Testament, it was prophesied in Zechariah these words, Behold, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious. He is humble and riding on a donkey, oh, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. 
Looking back at important figures that graced Earth long before our arrival, I think it's safe to say most of us would imagine the king riding in on a stallion, sword drawn, ready for battle. Or maybe in this time and location, the tallest, most impressive camel possible. But like most things that Jesus came and did, it turns out to be countercultural, not just to our time and place, but those that he walked alongside on earth too. Other kings that brought peace rode donkeys, so he wasn't the first one to do so. Solomon comes to mind as one of those very kings. But among the people, I am certain that they had no idea who was arriving. Even Jesus' own friends and disciples struggled to firmly grasp what was happening in the week ahead. Now, for many of these folks, they began to yell, Hosanna, which literally means save now. These folks, they were looking for anything to be able to get them over the hump of life. And as Jesus made his way into the temple, and this temple was the cultural center for Jews, religious and economic, pretty much everything took place in the temple. He set the tone. He wouldn't be a conqueror, but a peacemaker. But whatever their expectation was, they set it aside for a moment because the welcome that Jesus received certainly was fit for a king. Now in our preaching text, we see a man that's a continuation of Jesus being anointed and honored by Mary, Martha, and yes, this man, Lazarus. Now, the one that Jesus raised from the dead not long ago plays a huge part of this story. We're told that he's lounging, hanging out with his friend at the table, and his sisters are grateful, so much so that Mary poured the best perfume on Jesus' feet and dried them with her hair. This might seem like a strange scene for us today, but it was incredibly impactful in that moment. And Jesus' other friend is there too, Judas, and he is angry about this. Yes, that Judas. More on him later this week. But in this moment, he objected because of the lost value of the perfume itself and not the act. He said, there's poor people. How dare you? We could use that money for something else. But the truth is, this wasn't the true reason for his objection. He wanted to sell the perfume. He wanted to profit from it with his sticky fingers. But Jesus stood up for the woman like Jesus does. And in this exchange gives a glimpse of what is to come. Leave her alone, he said. It was intended that you save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. And then Jesus does his best mic drop. In that exchange, Jesus gives a glimpse of what is to come. And Judas isn't the only one upset at this time. The chief priests are concerned that the people were beginning to believe in Jesus. So the plans begin to take out Lazarus as a result. Now, if people tell you the Bible is boring, read this section of scripture. It is wild. We then read that Jesus and his caravan of friends begin to ascend into the town, where we find that Jesus has his own take on March Madness. Now, those gathered there didn't have a ton of resources, so they grabbed what they could to welcome the one that they'd heard a little bit about. Palm branches were seen as symbols of triumph and victory during this time, and so that's what they grabbed. And like crazy sports fans, they let out their cheers of Hosanna for their coming king, waving those palm branches all around. But was he who they thought would arrive? The people, they wanted a king to fight on their behalf in the here and now. But King Jesus came to fight on their behalf for eternity. And so King Jesus rode in among the people on the back of a donkey, experiencing a triumphal entry. As we know, at the end of this week, it was a different crown that Jesus wore. Not one of gold and rubies, but one of thorns and spilled blood. Heaven came to earth. Jesus walked among humanity and experienced the ups and downs that we too experience. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Not by our own doing, but because of the work that Jesus put in here on earth. Now, whether we claim to be in need of Jesus in our day to day, whether we're aware of the work that was done on our behalf, whether we can even fathom the grace and hope, peace and love that comes to us in Christ Jesus, our outlook changed because of Jesus' arrival as King. And this is something many of us are looking for. It might not be a King or even a Savior, but instead it's someone that's going to go to bat for you, 
someone that's going to listen, somebody that will be present with us, somebody that will pray like Jesus. And with him as our model in death and resurrection, we too are called to live this out boldly for our neighbor. And this is something that our world is greatly missing. People who are willing to put their differences aside, to listen and to journey, to be humanity together. Now the folks were looking for somebody that was going to pay attention to them, to bring them hope. And Jesus came and did that, and then some. Now Jerusalem was in need of peace and justice. And my friends, today as I look out on this broken world, we are in need of peace and justice. Jesus was the answer for them, and Jesus is the answer for us. He was the gift that we didn't know we needed. As we continue to make our way through Holy Week, I don't want us to jump to Easter quite yet. Now we are excited for you here on this Palm Sunday. You might find yourself this week wanting to jump over Monday Thursday or Good Friday because what is the good in that? I've heard that from time to time. But we're in need of this goodness that comes to us. And truthfully, I don't think that we like to be like those who are in Jerusalem, where we feel a little on the outside, a little down. We'd rather go straight to that hallelujah chorus on Easter Sunday morning and feel as though everything is great. But this just isn't the reality for us. This is why Jesus came. You see, Jesus came to bring that hope for Jerusalem, and Jesus came to bring hope for the world. And that that hope it would continue to be present with us today. And I wonder, as people who have experienced this hope, how can we share it with others? It might be through an invite to church. We still have more cards to hand out. It might be by being present with somebody, simply listening, especially before we speak, accompanying those that we love and those that we love to avoid, setting aside time to make worship and faith formation as an intentional part of our routine, finding ways to not just show up or check a box, but finding ways where we actually want to be the church together. Now, those that are watching today, no shade or judgment if you're not there yet but I hope that you get there. And I hope that you invite others to join you on this walk of faith, because this is what we're called to do. This is what we're being empowered to do by Jesus. And on those days where it might seem difficult or darn right impossible, remember that King Jesus came to bring justice and peace. He came to bring salvation. And because of what he's going to do at the end of this week, we too can be emboldened to trust that this is the good news that has come for all. And so I want to challenge us to take these steps to share it with others, those that we may or may not agree with, folks that make it uncomfortable for us to take those steps even. And I know this can be difficult, but remember, you're not alone in this act. It's because of what Jesus did and what Jesus is continuing to do with us that we're not alone in this journey. And your church is along for the ride too, sans donkey, of course. So find those ways to be the church. And remember that Jesus made his way toward the people, filled with believers and complete strangers, and the people that said, save us, save me. Their needs varied, but the thing that brought them together and gave them hope, it was Jesus. And as we make our way through Holy Week, we have the opportunity to go and share that same hope with others. So Good Shepherd, let's go and do likewise. And not just this week, but in every moment of our lives. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that all who believe in him wouldn't perish, but will have everlasting life. And not just for eternity, but in the here and now. As we walk toward Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and Resurrection Sunday this Easter, I pray that you not only taste salvation, but that you share it with somebody abundantly. Amen. Let's pray. God, we're so grateful for the gift that we have in your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. And as he made his triumphant entry, God, I pray that he may enter into our lives as King. I pray that we can find ways to trust him, to follow him, to have him rule in our lives in a way that transforms us and changes us as people of grace and hope, peace and love, to be sent out and share it with others. Be with us now and always. It's your name that we pray. Amen. As we continue our time of worship, let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue worshiping God with the song, King of Kings, fitting for a day like Palm Sunday. Let's sing together. Well, Good Shepherd, we have so many things to celebrate. Us being able to be the church wherever we're at is one thing. We, the Good Shepherd, we exist so that all may know the Good Shepherd and have abundant life in his name. And I want to challenge you to go and share that abundance with people in your neighborhood, wherever you might find yourself today. And if you're looking for a way to connect with us in the days ahead that would be incredibly impactful, we hope that you find all the things that we have going on in the life of our church. We have Monday, Thursday worship on online. We also have Good Friday and, of course, Easter Sunday 
both for traditional and contemporary, so maybe even check out all those services and get extra credit. If you want to help make sure that online worship continues to be strong here at Good Shepherd, we'd love to invite you to partner with us. You can head to our website, knowthegoodshepherd.org giving. You can text a dollar amount to the number 84321, or you can send in some snail mail to 4028 Street South, Moorhead, Minnesota, 56560. No matter how you get involved in these next weeks, know that we're so grateful to be the church with you, and we look forward to being with you in the days ahead. Receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All God's people said, Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.